Negotiations between Ukraine and Russia are ongoing. Let's bring in ABC's Patrick Revel in Kiev with more on that. Patrick, what's the latest on these talks? Hi, Dan. Yeah, I sat down with Ukraine's lead negotiator yesterday, and I think the most interesting thing for me that he said was that he considers these talks to be absolutely real, and that essentially in the last month, the Ukrainian resistance and the very heavy losses that they've managed to inflict on Russia has had a profound effect, that essentially Russia is having to moderate its demands that it's been making, and it's no longer giving the ultimatums that it was making when it first invaded. And that's at the cost, of course, of a huge number of Russian and Ukrainian lives. And he said, though, at the same time, he expects that these talks could go on for months. And that, obviously, is a very pessimistic outlook. And I think the fear here is that, ultimately, while Russia may be moderating its demands, in particular around the question of NATO membership and whether there's a, perhaps a formulation that can be found that's more acceptable to both sides, at the same time, Russia has not given up for now achieving what it at least can project as a victory. And so what we fear here is that we're moving towards potentially a grinding long war of attrition while Russia still tries to gain some of the things that it set out to in this war. And so how is Russia reacting to NATO's pledge now to increase defense spending and transform to meet what they call a more dangerous strategic reality? You know, I think in many ways what we're seeing now with NATO, ironically, is exactly what Russia said it was trying to prevent when it came into Ukraine. You know, they hoped that by doing this they would push Ukraine further away from NATO. In fact, that the opposite has happened. It's now being united around and is being armed by most Western countries. And at the same time, NATO itself has been hugely reinvigorated. And in particular, the number of NATO troops is now, of course, hugely increased closer to Russia. And that's because of the fear among many Eastern European countries that they now could also face Russian aggression. I think there is, of course, a serious risk here that as NATO countries are continuing to supply weapons to Ukraine, that Russia might try and strike at those supplies. And there's particularly big concern in countries like the Baltic states and Poland that at some point Russia might take that sort of step. So what are you seeing there in Kyiv, Patrick? You know, a month ago, it, I mean, a month ago when we were here, it felt like the Russians could enter within days. I remember just over my shoulder behind me, we could see fighting in the distance. We could hear explosions. But now, right now, the center of Kiev is remarkably calm, really, and that's because the Russians have been held by the Ukrainian forces about 20 miles from here on the edge of the city. And there's intense fighting there, very intense fighting. But the Ukrainians now have gone on a counterattack and have managed to push the Russians back to a certain degree. The Ukrainians even claim that they've managed to encircle the Russians to a certain degree. And I think that is remarkable. What it means is that the Russians, at the very least, are on the back foot. And so, again, right now, there's, there's no sense and no military experts believe the Russians are in position to encircle Kiev in the near future and that the only hope they have of doing that is if they can bring significant reinforcements from Russia, which would mean some kind of mobilization in Russia, which would be a very difficult political decision for Vladimir Putin. All right. And the first U.S. shipments of weapons and military equipment are arriving in Ukraine. What impact could those have, Patrick? You know, I think those shipments of weapons are having a huge impact. I think it's one of the reasons that we're seeing the, the Ukrainians able to resist in the way that they are, especially these anti-tank weapons. And they're using them and they're using them against Russian columns very effectively. You know, NATO assesses that Russia may have lost 7,000 troops in the, last, in the last month, which is, of course, enormous. And, you know, generally in, in, military, in military understanding, if you have 7,000 dead, then potentially you have three times as many wounded. And so that would be an enormous amount of casualties for Russia to have sustained. I think also what we're hearing and what I heard yesterday from this negotiator, this, this presidential aide, um, this Ukrainian presidential aide, who was saying to me that more air defense is essential, that if they want to push Russia into eventually uh, having a negotiated settlement, they need more ways of inflicting pain, and the air defense in particular is essential to that. All right, Patrick Vebel and Q4. Patrick, stay safe. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.